What's up y'all, my name is Devin Wynn. Welcome to 11% Tutorial. Today I'll be showing you guys how you can recreate this crazy looking Chrome Glow logo effect. It's just a really cool effect that you can use to spice up your title cards or designs or graphics. It's an effect that will always look clean and timeless and is also really simple to recreate. Today we'll just be using Photoshop to recreate this effect, no plugins required. But before we get started, if you guys are new to this channel, please make sure that you like this video and subscribe if you haven't. It's free, all this content is free, so it'd really mean a lot if you guys could. Also remember to follow us on Instagram here at 11% Prod for more future updates on tutorials like this but without further ado let's go ahead and jump right into this tutorial all right guys so now that we are finally in photoshop the first thing that you're going to want to do of course is drag in your file so i just have the 11 percent logo right here and might i add that this effect can pretty much work on any logo so as long as you just have a basic you know black or white image transparent preferably then you know it should work so the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to double click on this layer right here and now you're going to see it's going to open up this layer style and we're going to have all these options and settings here we're going to come over here to our bevel and emboss and we were going to click on that and you can see we already kind of got some effect going on right here now for those of you who might not have these settings preset and saved it might be set at this linear bevel right here and we're basically going to come over here to the size and increase this to a good about uh, about 50 or 60 works and then the depth uh, make sure you increase it to about 500 this is just basically creating an ai rendered 3d of what it imagined a beveled curve would look like on this logo right here so for those of you who have this linear set contour, you can go ahead and click on that on this drop down menu and we are going to mess around with the settings. So now this honestly depends on your logo, like how big the logo is, how small some parts are, but I would say definitely check out all of these and see which Chrome effect that you'd preferably like the best. I'm gonna go ahead and go with this like upside down mountain one right here, click on that and then we're just gonna click over here. And then you can see we basically kind of have a nice looking liquid effect going on with our textures. Next, what we are going to do is we are going to come over here to this gradient overlay and this is where you're gonna have fun and mess around with these colors so the colors obviously are going to depend after we apply some of our curves and color grading after but i'm just going to go ahead and set this at a nice let's go ahead and do a nice like purple and blue right here select your gradient and then hit okay and then perfect we should have a nice gradient and beveled liquid looking object so now while we're getting closer to our effect this still isn't our final chrome effect now here is where the real effects start to come into play we're going to come over here and we're going to create a folder we're going to call this logo and we are going to take the logo that we just added all these effects to and drag that within the folder. Now, this is a very important part. Make sure when you close the folder, you can uh, the logo goes away because indicating that is inside. The logo has to be in a folder for all these effects to apply. Next thing that we're going to do, we're going to come over here and we are going to create a curves overlay. So we're going to uh, select the curves right here. And then you can see we have a nice curves panel. Then what we're going to do is we are going to right click this and hit create clipping mask. So now basically what this means is that all these curves effects are only going to apply to this layer right here. So now what we're going to do is we are going to click this curve scale and we're just going to mess around with the settings. So click first point right here, pretty much just where I'm dragging it. And we're going to drag this all the way up to the top pretty much right around here honestly works. And then we're going to come over here a little bit farther out to the right and then drag a point and drag it all the way down until we get this nice looking upside down sideways S shape. And now you can see we kind of have this really weird chrome looking effect going on right here. And now this basically was where all the effects come in and you're going to want to start messing around with this color green. I'm going to go ahead and set this background to black. So I'm just going to double click it and hit color overlay and change this to black so I can see uh, my effect better. And you can see we have a nice looking chrome effect going on right here. So as you can see, the curves are going to you know adjust and switch up the colors. So I personally do not like that purple color now. We can of course come back here and change it by double clicking this logo and coming here to the gradient overlay and then just messing around with some settings again. So I'm going to pick a color variant that I see fit to the logo. I'm going to settle on this nice turquoise gradient color right here. And now we have a nice looking logo with some chrome effects going on right here. So obviously you can change these chrome effects to your liking, but for now, all the extra effects. And this is the fun part, I like to say. We're going to close this folder right here. We're going to hold shift, select the folder, and then we're going to hit shift, uh, continue to hold shift and select the curves. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click this and duplicate these layers. And then we are just, you can just call it Chrome logo duplicate, it doesn't really matter. Once we have a new duplicate of these layers, we are going to right click them again, and then we are just going to hit convert to smart object. And basically what this did is it created an entire new layer 
of just all the effects that we made uh, combined into one layer. So we can turn everything back on right here. And what this is basically gonna serve as is our glow. We are going to make sure that we are selecting on this new layer right here that we created and we're going to hit filter and then we are going to go to our blur. And then we're gonna hit Gaussian blur and then we are going to adjust this to about 10 to 20 honestly works and hit okay. And now you can see we got this weird looking blur over it. And what we're gonna do to fix this and turn this into a glow is we're going to select the blending mode and change this basically to lighten. And now you can see we kind of have a nice looking effect going on right here. Kind of serves a purpose, gets the job done. And of course, if you like the brightness to be brighter, you can add an exposure and then create a clipping mask to apply just for the blur. And we can go ahead and increase that glow as well. So, you know, there's a whole bunch of ways that you can just mess around with the setting and make sure that you get the effect that you're most happy with. Now for the final finishing touches and that I say wraps up every effect is these sparkles, these stars, these stars and sparkles. It's like glitter. It's like adding glitter to your first grade projects. You always do it. Why? Because it makes everything look beautiful. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to select this polygon object right here. If you don't see it, you can right click it and you might be selected on a rectangle. Make sure you hit the polygon tool. Come over here to this polygon count and we're going to type in yeah, four and then you're going to make sure this roundness is at one or zero if you preferably can. I don't know if you can do zero. Yeah, you have to do one. Okay, so we're gonna do one. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the setting icon and we're gonna make sure that the star ratio is pretty much at almost the lowest it can be. I'm gonna set it to 3%. And that should pretty much get it done. What we're gonna do is we're gonna hold shift and drag a star now. And now you can see, ta-da, we made a nice looking star going on right here. And if you click aside, we have a nice little X star going on right here. Gets the job done. And what we're gonna do from here is we are going to apply a blur. So we're gonna hit filter once again, making sure that we're selected on this new star that we created. We're gonna hit blur, Gaussian blur. And it's gonna ask to convert it to a smart object. I'm honestly gonna say rasterize it because of some effects that we're gonna be applying on it later down the line. Adjust the blur about to 6%, six to 10% honestly works. And then what comes in right here is we're gonna come over here to our brush tool. We're gonna to make sure that you're selected on a size that is adequate for the center. So this is gonna be the main brightness of the star. So about 120 works for me. This honestly depends on how big you made your star is. And then we're just gonna drag this hardness all the way down to 0%. And when you see, when we click on it, we have a nice looking star going on, ta-da. And now you can see if we hit, click on it and hit Command T to adjust the scale, we have a cool looking star that we can adjust and apply to our effects. So the key thing about these stars is that you're gonna apply them in the areas that are the brightest of the scene. You can apply a blend mode onto it, but it honestly depends on your footage. So we can add a linear dodge add. Honestly, doesn't make a difference, but you know, mess around with it, have fun, make it to your liking. I'm gonna drag some stars right here. And once you have your first star aligned, we are just going to simply duplicate it. Hold option and drag. And we are just going to repeat this process for any areas we feel needs stars. And of course you can go ahead and click some areas click some stars and drag them up to increase the scale if you feel some brightnesses should be a little bit brighter and just continue to drag them around. As you can see, I'm trying to keep them on the blue, light blue sides because those are the closest colors to white. And now you can see we have a nice couple of stars going on here. I'm going to click the top star, hold shift, and click the bottom star and we're just gonna put that in a folder so that we don't lose our stars. We can name them stars right here. And then I'm just going to increase this exposure up just to match the brightness of this so that the stars blend in just a little bit more so we have a little bit more glow. And voila, there is our final glow chrome logo effect. If you guys made it to the end of the tutorial, thank you again so much for watching. I hope at the end of this, you guys will be able to walk away with an effect that you can use and apply for your future projects and graphics. Please remember to like the video and subscribe if you haven't yet, and turn on the notification bell for updates on tutorials like this. If you guys have any questions or concerns, please make sure to leave a comment down below. I would love to hear you guys' input and feedback. And also, if you create something cool, feel free to add us on Instagram. We'd love to see what you guys make. Once again, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.